why we are live. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call um, the meeting to order. And I'd like to at first acknowledge that we are in Treaty 1 territory, the home and traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Inuit, Cree, and Dakota peoples, and in the national homeland of the Red River Métis. Our drinking water comes from Shoal Lake 41st Nation in Treaty 3 territory. My name is Cynthia Stevens, and uh, I will be chairing the hearing this afternoon. Um, on the panel with me will be Adelia Deloro and Ron Merritt. Our assessor is Kara Kaplevi, and our secretary this afternoon is Jaswinder Kumar. To the Zoom participants in the hearing, please note you are placed in the waiting room until your property is called upon. When it is your turn, you will be admitted into the meeting. Kindly follow along in the City of Winnipeg's Board of Revision YouTube channel for the hearing process. Once the host admits you into the hearing, please close or mute your YouTube player. You will then be permitted to speak with respect to your property. Once your hearing has concluded, you can leave the meeting. We will be hearing applications for a revision of the assessment role in accordance with the Municipal Assessment Act. The matters for which revision is requested have been described in each application, and we will limit discussion to those matters. The statements that are made at this hearing are sworn testimony, and anyone speaking to the matters must be sworn in. Please be advised that comparisons of assessments of properties are not considered evidence of market value by the Board of Revision. The Board of Revision is appointed annually by Council and is independent of it and the City Administration. It makes its decisions on the basis of the evidence provided at this hearing and issues a written order that will be mailed to all parties as soon as possible. Please note that the Board's decisions with respect to an application may be appealed to the Manitoba Municipal Board if the matter pertains to assessed value or classification, or the Court of Queen's Bench if the matter pertains to the application of exemptions from taxation. Should you wish to appeal, information on how to do so will be included with the Board's order. Res respect to the hearing process, I will confirm, confirm the points of appeal with your property to be addressed with each applicant following the swearing in. We will then have the assessor's testimony followed by questions that the applicant may have, and then the applicant's testimony followed by questions. Each side will have an opportunity to summarize at the end if they wish. Once all of the evidence about an application has been brought forward, the applicant may leave. The process will then repeat for each item on the docket today. The session will close after all applications have been heard and the board will deliberate in private and make its decisions. You will see, receive the board's decision by registered mail as soon as possible. As information, all public hearings are live streamed, recorded, and will be part of the public record. So, Mr. Kumar, if you, uh, before we, get to swearing in, I, um, it's um, been brought to my attention that the number one on the docket today, 608 Alverston and number four, um, 838 Prince Rupert Avenue, um, that there are no applicants present at this time. So we're going to move those two items to the bottom of the uh, uh, docket. And so we'll be starting with property number two on today's um, agenda, which is 121 Eastgate. And Mr. Kumar, if you'd like to swear in the assessor and the applicant, please. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Madam Assessor, please state your full name. Kara Kaplevi. Thank you. Do you affirm that the evidence you are about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Madam Applicant, please state your full name. I think uh, Ms. Newfeld, I think that, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay, there we go. Okay, my, my name is Valerie Newfeld. Thank you. Do you affirm that the evidence you are about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we're going to start with 121 Eastgate. Um, Ms. Neufeld, the assessor, will present her information first. Um, then you'll be able to ask questions, as will the panel. And then we'll turn to you for you to make your presentation, OK? Yeah. OK, thank you. So uh, Ms. Kaplevi, please uh, proceed when you're ready. Thank you, Madam Chair. The subject property is 121 Eastgate. It has a roll number of 1209-168. 7000. It is located in the area, the neighborhood of 119 Armstrong Point. It is a one story single dwelling 
with a year built of 1954 and effective age of 1964. It is 1,866 square feet with a walkout basement. It has basement finish, one full bath, one half bath, two showers. It has central air conditioning, two fireplaces. It has an attached garage by the basement. It has an assessed lot size of 16,215 square feet, and the Assiniboine is adjacent as a land influence. It has a 2023 assessment roll value of 899,000, which is $481.78 per square foot. Comparable one is 166 Westgate, also in the Armstrong Point area. Comparable two is 70 Middlegate, also in the Armstrong Point area. Comparable three is 68 Roslyn Crescent, which is in 117 Roslyn. And comparable four is 100 Middlegate, which is also in the Armstrong Point area. The comparables, all comparables are one story, single dwellings built between 1950 and 1954. The effective age of the comparables are 1950 to 1983. The comparables have full basements with basement finish. The full bath count ranges from one for comparable two, three, and four. Comparable one has two. Comparable one, three, and four have one half bath and shower. Comparable two has two. Comparable one and four have central air conditioning. Like the subject, comparable two and three do not have central air conditioning. Comparable three and four have a single attached garage. Comparable one and two have a multiple attached garage. Comparable two has a sunroom. The lot sizes of the comparables range from 9,074 square feet to 21,406 square feet. Comparable one and comparable three have the Assiniboine adjacent as the influence, which is the same as the subject. The sales prices range from 425,000 to 990,000. The time adjusted sale price of the comparables are 460,700 to 1,072,200. The time adjusted sales price per square foot of the comparables range from $346.39 to $482.10 per square foot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Newfeld, do you have any questions for the assessor? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. No? Okay. Um, Mr. Merritt, do you have any questions for the assessor? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, Ms. Kaplevy, um, I see that you have a, um, a quite a variety or price range um, for the comparables with the low being 425,000 and the high being uh, 990,000. So um, I note that comparable sale number one, the effective age, there's a, uh, a 30 year difference there. So um, what um, can you tell me what's happening there? I, I can tell you with the compare with the subject property, the subject property has a walkout basement, which is definitely a plus. I could not find any comparables similar to the subject as in a one story with the age with the walkout basement. The subject property also has the Assiniboine River as adjacent, which again is a strong plus. So I picked my comparables. That's why I use comparable one, even though it does have a higher effective age. It is in the same neighborhood area with the Assiniboine adjacent. So that is uh, definitely a plus. And a comparable three has a smaller dwelling, which also has the Assiniboine adjacent. Comparable two and comparable four are in the same neighborhood without 
the Assiniboine adjacent and different square footage size. So that kind of accounts for all over with the um, uh, with the difference for the uh, the sales prices range and the age range. It was more looking at um, the price per square foot is what I thought was important in this case. So when you talk about the subject being adjacent to the Assiniboine, did it back onto it or it's just adjacent to it? At, at the back, the, the back of the property has the Assiniboine. It backs onto it. Yes. Okay. So when you look at comparable number three, um, that is really not. I mean, it's it's a it backs onto the Assiniboine, but. Can you compare Westgate to Roslyn Crescent? Again, it would be, well, it would be in the same market area. So that's why I picked that. And because um, it's also in a little cul-de-sac or a little area off, off. So I thought personally that was similar with having the Cinnaboyne adjacent and kind of for the type of neighborhood. And it is the same neighborhood or the same, um, sorry, the same um, market area, just different uh, neighborhood areas. So I'm just trying to sort of narrow it down in regards to, you know, the, um, the market value for the subject. And, you know, that's comparable number three, um, you know, with $660,000 compared to what the subject is at. So, um, I know there's a difference in square footage, but just, and then, you know, if you look at comparable number, uh, comparable number four, um, it has a, you know, uh, substantially different, uh, uh, sale price, um, you know, about half of it. Exactly. I, I realize that. And that's why I said uh, with the subject property, it does have a walkout basement and it's quite larger than comparable three and four. So what I felt was important in this properties was this per square footage rate, because, of course, a property with a walkout basement and a property with the Assiniboine adjacent is going to sell more for a higher per square footage than one without a walkout basement or one without the Assiniboine adjacent. I thank you very kindly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Del Oro, do you have any questions for the assessor? Uh, my questions also pertained to comparable three, but I think it's been addressed by my co-panel member. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And um, my questions have all been answered as well. So, Ms. Newfeld, uh, if you would like to proceed when you're ready with your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I've never done this before, so my apologies for maybe being a bit nervous and stumbling through my words. Um, I guess the one thing that um, I looked at when I looked at these compared properties was that our property was worth... Well, if I get the numbers correct, I think it was like the square footage. It was like 481.78 square foot. It's the most expensive house per square foot of all of the comparables. And um, I know in my, what I sent, I, I'm not sure if you actually saw the email that I sent with my whole argument when I presented this whole thing, but I have a number of pictures of our house and our house needs a lot. Uh, yes, I just, just to confirm for you, we do have... Um, the information that you sent so uh, oh, we yes. can we can look at it if you're referring to the pictures we can see them yes yeah if you would yeah if you'd like to because that would actually be because our house is worth the most per square foot compared to any of the other houses and I wasn't able to pull up I pulled up 166 what comparable one and I looked on the like the real estate when it was sold and the house is completely renovated and beautiful and brand new everything is renovated in that home and it's worth less it's worth I think, I think the number, if I'm, I, whatever, I scribbled it down, so I may have scribbled the wrong one, but the number I have here is 445.414, whatever, per square foot, and that's a house that's completely renovated, and our home, if you to look at the pictures, our kitchen, actually our floor, the hardwood floor in our kitchen is quite damaged and needs replacement, our cabinets are all like 20 years old, and they're all, they, all, they actually do need replacing, they're all, whatever, they're water damaged, the countertop is um, needs replacement. 
And actually for the last year, our stove and our dishwasher haven't worked. So we need to get new appliances in our kitchen. So our kitchen needs complete, needs a complete workover. Our windows, for the most part, we have a sunroom. So that sunroom has, um, has good windows. But the rest of the house just has single pane. And there's a lot of windows in this house. So it's all single pane. Um, the basement, it says it has two showers. But one shower is pretty unusable. It's in a basement sort of closet area. So it's actually not a usable, sh it's barely usable shower. Um, and also the basement has, like the flooring needs to be replaced. It's quite an old, it's an old basement. It hasn't. It's, we use it as a basement, but it has a lot of work to be done. Um, there's a picture of the chimney on our house that needs to be replaced. Um, and the backyard, we have an old depleted pool like that's like it's so we have that needs to get replaced. So we actually had someone come in last week to take a look at how much our backyard would cost to get refurbished. And he gave us a number of, I think it was 89,000 to redo our backyard and to get it fixed up because it's it's never really had much work done on it and it and the walls like there's a retaining wall that's falling apart that needs to be replaced so our backyard has a lot of work that needs to be done wow. so I wonder about the comparisons that it's done where our house is worth the most per square footage but um I didn't see the the, the real estate pictures of the other of comparable the other comparables but comparable one had like it was a brand new home so our house needs a lot of renovations so that and it's worth the most my next point is that it actually went up two hundred and sixty one thousand dollars last year we actually had our house reassessed my husband went through the whole assessment with drew i have it on the paper i don't have that um so drew what's his name sorry Tyson or something. Drew, yeah, Drew Tyson, and he assessed it. The assessment value was two hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars cheaper than what it's been assessed. So it's actually gone up. It went up two hundred sixty-one thousand dollars since last year. Um, and I know that you said that houses, neighboring houses don't make a difference, but I know if we went to the price and I have it all written on, on what I did, but, but all of the homes, which either are similar size or larger, they're all between 268 to $380,000 cheaper than our home, even though they're similar sizes, the lots are similar sizes and the price that was um, assessed was much cheaper. Um, I think that's, yeah. Do you guys have any questions of me? Uh, yeah, well, what, what's going to happen now is if, you're, if, if, uh, if you've completed your presentation, um, the assessor will be able to ask you questions and then we will ask you questions as well. So are you, are you finished with your presentation? I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. That's, that's great. Thank you. So, Ms. Kaplevy, do you have any questions for Ms. Neufeld? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Applicant, you did an addition in 2007 on your house, correct? Yep. Yeah, and what kind of an addition did you do at that time? We put a sunroom on our back of our house. Okay. And was the kitchen and flooring upgraded? When we bought the house, so that would have been, what year was that that we bought the house? It was like 20 years ago. That we bought the house, so we did. We did. Uh, we the, yeah, we did the kitchen twenty years ago. Okay, and uh, just more of a statement. Just so you do see on um, the information there. We don't count. We don't have your pool as as a attribute on your house. No, it's a it's a huge deterrent because when we no, it's it's completely unusable. It's a it's a big concrete hole that's unusable actually. Yeah, so I'm just clarifying that we don't have your. It's, yeah, it's a massive deterrent. Okay. Backyard. And uh, you don't have a picture of the back of your house in with your information. You had the front, but you yeah. don't show the back with the walkout basement. No, but I have a picture of like what it looks like around, like in the back with the concrete that's all yeah. falling apart in the back. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Del Oro, do you have any questions for Ms. Newfeld? I just have one question. Um, you say that there was there is easily two hundred fifty thousand dollars required to upgrade the house. Um, did you have any formal estimates, or was that just sort of your guesstimation of what work needs to be done? 
Oh, I don't think I said that. I, 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 in your in your evidence, sorry. I'm reading it off of your evidence. No, I don't think I said that. I know that the the price of our house went up. There is easily 250000 required to upgrade this house. It is impossible okay. to believe that the value is 899000 Yeah, okay. No, but I have 100000 for the backyard. And then actually, okay, if you were actually to go through it, so like a new hardwood floor and then new cabinetry in our kitchen and then, no, we haven't had an official assessment on the inside of the house, but we have had on the back of our house and it was 89 is what the price it gave us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Merritt, do you have any questions? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Dufield, um, um, I think you had mentioned that your husband was here before. Yeah. Okay. And um, um, he was successful in regards to um, his presentation in regards to um, reducing the assessment? Yes, yes. Last year, the house, the assessment was and, at... And do you recall um, why it was uh, reduced? I think a lot of a lot of it was he just sent drew a number of Mr. Teeson a number of pictures of our house like a, like of the inside of our house so a lot of it was around the discussion about all the renovations that were required in our home. But did they did they specify um, any particular deterrence? Uh, how do you mean? Um, I'm saying that you know did your husband. Obviously, he presented some pictures of your maybe your backyard and pool, and you know probably the uh, pool house, uh, you know that was probably maybe falling down. And that's yeah. And is there a picture of the pool house? I think there is a picture of the pool house back here in this. And in, in my uh, there is some on your presentation. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's yeah. So that's what he would have presented to. So, so you're here this afternoon to state what you think the market value of your property is. Can you state that for us? Well, I know last year we had it assessed and uh, Mr. Thiessen assessed it for $268,000. And that, and that was actually very, if you were to, I know you don't want to compare houses like next door to us, but that is very much in line with the price of the houses that are like two, three, four, five houses down from this house. Just off the, and who is Mr. Thiessen? Pardon me, sorry? Who is Mr. Thiessen? Mr. Thiessen, yeah, he was he was for the with the assessment. So, like last year, he Dylan was an was, assessor. Yeah, he was an assessor. Drew Thiessen. Madam Chair, if I can clarify something after, please. Yes. Okay. I can do that now. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I just w want to say that your previous value was based on an old reference date. And the 2023 value is based on a new market valuation date and new sales data. So the previous one does not have any bearing on it. So why would our houses next door not have gone up in price? Because I looked at the at the current assessment of the houses. Okay, next okay, okay, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm just sorry, just gonna stop that there. Um, let's go. Let's finish off questionings of, of Ms. Newfeld, and then um, we can come come back to this discussion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, did you have any further questions? I, 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 I think, um, Madam Chair, um, I see where you're going because you can't really compare assessments. So we're after market value for the subject property. Yes. So um, maybe you could state for the record what you think the uh, assessment should be for this uh, evaluation, which is, I think, April the 1st, 2020. So Ms. Newfield, yep. record? It, yeah, what, what do you think? Yeah, what, what the question is, what do you think your home is worth? Oh my goodness. Well, I would like to go with what he said last year, but I don't know if that would happen. But I would so last year they said it would be worth. I'm just gonna look at the I know it's got a ballpark figure. I would, yeah, I'll give you a ballpark. Like I would between seven and seven fifty. Okay, thank you. I finished. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do think that most of my questions have been answered. So you did, uh, Ms. Newfeld, you did say that the only formal assessment. Um, 
quotation you have is uh, is for the backyard. Yeah. So the the total of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, the the remaining part of that is is is, a, is your guess as to what it would cost to bring the house up to. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think that's all of my questions. Now, did you still have another question that you wanted to ask? Um. No, I I don't. I don't think. Okay. I don't, so, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, um, uh, Ms. Kaplevi, do you have a summation you'd like to make? Um, I feel based on the comparables of the selling price per square foot and the selling price of the comparables and the, um, the attributes and land influences, I feel that the 2023 value is correct. And I ask that it be confirmed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Neufeld, is there anything you'd like to say in summation? Well, I'd like to like, reiterate 100% around the square footage value of our house compared to the comparables. It does not make sense to me that our house is the most expensive per square foot considering all of the renovations that need to be done around our home. So I, I completely challenge that 100% actually. Okay. Thank you very much. And thanks so much for appearing this afternoon. And you'll receive our decision uh, in the mail shortly. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, take care. Okay. Okay, the next item that we are going to look at is item number three on the agenda and it is 155 Douglas Park Road. Um, so Mr. Kumar, you can swear in the applicant when you're ready. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hello, Miss Applicant. Uh, please state your full name. Les <coughs> Leslie Hessler. Thank you. Do you affirm that the evidence you are about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Hessler. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, if you've been watching, you may have seen that what will happen now is um, the assessor will present her information. Uh, then there'll be an opportunity for questions, including yours. And then it'll be uh, your turn to present your information and the same process will repeat. Okay. And we are, we are looking at the assessed value of your property, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Ms. Kaplevi, please uh, proceed when you're ready. Thank you, Madam Chair. The subject property is 155 Douglas Park Road. It is a roll number of 07040435000. It is located in 204 Bruce Park neighborhood. It is a one story with the building code of a secondary unit, a year built of 1951, an effective year built of 1961. It is 2,225 square feet. It has a full basement with basement finish. It has three full baths, one half bath, one shower. The subject property has central air conditioning and a multiple detached garage. The assessed lot size is 13,032 square feet. The land influence is a community rec building school. The 2023 assessment roll value is 596,000, which is $267.87 per square feet. Comparable one is 29 Carlisle Bay. Comparable two is 103 Olive Street. Comparable three is 15 Carlisle Bay. And comparable four is 31 Shakespeare Bay. Comparable one, three and four are in the Westwood neighborhood area, 224, and comparable two is in the neighborhood area, 207 Birchwood. They are all in the same market region. Comparable one to four are all single dwellings, single or one story single dwellings. They have a year built of 1963 to 1968. The effective age of the comparables is 1963 to 1973. The living areas range from 1576 square feet to 1805 square feet. All have full basements and basement finish. All comparables have one full bath, 
All comparables have two half baths and one shower. Comparable three has two showers. All comparables have central air conditioning and a fireplace. Number four has one. Comparable one has two. And comparable three has three fireplaces. Comparable one and two have multiple attached garages. Comparable three has a single attached garage. Comparable four has a multiple detached garage, which is same as the subject. Comparable four has an in-ground pool. The lot sizes of the comparables range from 7,204 square feet to 10,570 square feet. Comparable one has a land influence of a golf course. Comparable two has a land influence of commercial, external corner and a park. The sales prices of the comparables range from 420,000 to 550,000. The sales price time adjusted range from 464,500 to 606,100. The time adjusted sales price per square foot of the comparables range from $268.65 to $335.79. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hessler, do you have any questions for the assessor? Uh, no. No? Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Merritt, do you have any questions? Thank you. Um, I see that the uh, subject property sold in 2017 for half a million dollars. 500,000, sorry. Yes. I have no further questions, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Deloro, do you have any questions? I do not have any questions, thank you. Um, my only um, question relates to just, and I, I'm, I'm assuming um, that it's, to do with the um, the neighborhood that the uh, subject property is in being a, a smaller neighborhood because these are kind of wildly across the west end of the city, these comps, correct? Uh, the comparables are all in the same market region and they're all on the same side of Portage. They're all between Portage and uh, Grant or Roblin. Okay, yeah, some of them just look like they're quite a distance away, but it, it, it is the same market region? Those Yes. Even the, the Shakespeare Bay is, eh? Okay, all right. Um, so it, obviously that you weren't able to find any comps that were right in that uh, Bruce Park area? That's correct, yes. Okay, okay, thank you, that's all I have. Okay, Ms. Hessler, um, please proceed with your presentation when you're ready. Okay. Um, my problem is that uh, the assessed value has gone up 100,000 in the last two years, which to me seems extreme to be going up that high. And uh, when we first bought the house back in uh, 2017, we got to know the neighbors and they all felt that we had overpaid for the house. I do know that the house had been on the market a number of times and taken off the market because it didn't sell. So, and we had no competition when we bought, uh, when we bought the house, there was no one else uh, putting in an offer at all. So I, we do know that, as you can see from the comparables and even the comparables that I sent you as well, uh, the house is rather unique in that uh, the people who lived here prior to us had eight children and they had invited their uh, in-law to live with them and built something on the back of the house for her to live in. So there's kind of an apartment. It's separate, but not separate. So it's not the kind of situation that everybody would want. So uh, it, to sell, I, my understanding is the assessed value, value is what you could get if you wanted to sell this house. Well, you would be appealing to a niche market, really. There's not that many people who would want a house that is similar to this this style. And when we when I went looking for comparables, like I didn't even notice any of those ones that you um, that the assessor uh, put down because um, the amount of living space 
and the uh, amount of land didn't really compare. They don't really compare there. So I had put down those two on Assiniboine 1760, which I think you got, and also 2454 Assiniboine. And the thing with those, that they're two-story houses, which I don't really know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But anyway, it gives more living space that you considered. So as I looked at that, the living space on 2459 Assiniboine is similar in that it's 1924. And on 1760, it's 2250. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to, I just want to clarify for you, Ms. Hessler, that those two sales are outside of our reference period. So the reference period is April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2023. No, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> you no, know, you're not outside. I'm sorry. I uh, I misspoke. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, they're in uh, the year 2020. Yeah, no, it's 2020. You, you, I, I completely misspoke. You're correct. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so that's how I was looking at it. And then also in the amount of land, in the square footage of the land. So as I'm going through all of the sales books and looking for something that's even remotely like this house, it was a difficult thing to find. And so I ended up with a two-story building. And the land... Uh, for those two properties, one was 1120 and the other 11890. So, I mean, they were sort of more similar and they did sell for more. And But the thing is, they are on water. They are on the Assiniboine. So that certainly, as you have mentioned previously, uh, increases the value of the property for there. So... Um, as far as the house itself, um, right now it needs a new driveway, which it's this property is got 45 uh, feet of frontage, which makes it a very narrow uh, piece of property compared to those in the neighborhood and also in the comparables. So the driveway is very long and narrow and needs replacing. I did send some pictures, but I don't know if you got them in time. Yes, we I, yes we have them of the driveway. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I had sent them separate. So uh, we did get a price on that about three years ago, and it was going to be thirty thousand at that point. Which I'm sure, with COVID and all of the things going up, it's more than that now. So it's probably more in the neighborhood of forty or even more than that. <clears throat> I I want to get some prices, but I haven't <laughs> haven't done it yet. So it needs a new driveway, and um, from my understanding, although the market was very hot in uh, during COVID, it has cooled off, and market prices have gone down twenty percent. So uh, I think it's unreasonable to expect to get uh, the amount that you had mentioned, uh, five, nine, eight, or something thousand for this house, and the amount of people that are going to be looking. For this house, it's we love it. We love the area, and I certainly won't, you know, downgrade it and everything. But it does not look like a half a million dollar house. It's big, <laughs> but if it basically is a three bedroom bungalow that had an addition put on, and that's what it looks like. So if you're going to spend a half a million on a house, you want it to look like a half a million dollar house, I think. Now, for us, it worked out really well because uh, my daughter was looking for a house and needed a one floor. And we were looking at it for a house at the same time. We couldn't find something in our price ranges separately. But when we pooled our resources, this fit. So that's not always going to happen when we, you know, when you want to put this house up for sale. So that's pretty well it. Okay. My husband's over in the corner and he wants to pipe up if that's okay. Uh, he hasn't been, um, he would have to be sworn yeah, in if he's joined. Let me just tell you, uh, the comparables are. <laughs> no, I'm, excuse, excuse me for a minute. He, he would yeah, have to be sworn can't do in that. if he's going to. If, if he wants to be sworn in, we can do that. But um, yeah, okay, we'll just leave it. Okay. Are you sure? I don't want to. Okay. All right. Thank you. You want to be sworn in? 
Well, sure. Okay, well, come over here where they can see you. Okay, so he'll be sworn in and he can say what he had to say. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Um, this sir. is my husband, David Hessler. Okay, uh, sir, please state your full name. David Hessler. Thank you. Do you affirm that the evidence you are about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hessler, uh, please um, proceed with what you'd like us to hear. Thank you. Just one item that I I, I think you said, the, the comparables that you gave uh, are newer than ours. I think ours was initially put up in 1951 and then modified a little later. Uh, and, and when the modifications were made, the addition was put on, oh, 1970 or something. Um, they did it in a very awkward way. The basement is really laid out strangely, so uh, it's it's not it's not done well. Uh, we usually have a hall that takes you down. They have a hall that takes you from one corner of the basement to the other, which is just totally strange. So uh, that also will affect the value of the house, and it's probably because that the renovations were done a long time ago. That's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. So, and okay. then there was one other thing that I thought was important, but but it wasn't mentioned that the frontage of each one of these comparables is is quite a bit more than the 45 that we have. Like there's 80, 75, 60, 55, 80, 59. So, okay. And we Thank have you. no fireplace and everybody else does. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kaplevy, do you have any questions for Ms. Hessler? Uh, yes, I do. Just a statement to clarify it. According to the permit, the nanny in-law suite, the rear addition was built in 1988 on a full basement, not 1970, whatever. Um, the we husband didn't know said. that. So yeah. we didn't know when it was, was built. Okay. But thank you. I'll read that down. Uh, the market has changed drastically from 2017 to 2021. Have you talked to a real estate agent to see what the value of your house would be? No. Okay, thank you. And just also, I just want to make a statement that we don't compare bungalows to two stories. A bungalow is worth more than a two story, just like a river. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, Ms. Del Oro, do you have any questions for Ms. Hessler? Um, just just one, I guess. These, this in-law suite, does it have its own and separate entrance? Like, is it something that can be let out? Or, like, how are you using it at the a, moment? A um, sliding door to the deck, yeah. Okay. That, that would be separate. Otherwise, it's a joint entrance, side entrance that is used most often. Okay, thank you. That's joint. Mr. Merritt, do you have any questions? I have none, madam. Um, and I think I do not have any questions either. So, Ms. Kaplevy, do you uh, have any summation you'd like to make? Uh, based on the comparables of the selling price and the selling price per square foot, I feel that the 2023 value is correct, and I ask that it be confirmed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hessler, do you have any state the final uh, summation you'd like to provide with provide us? Well, just again, that I think a uh, $100,000 increase is excessive. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, joining Hi. us this afternoon. And uh, you'll receive our, um, our decision in the mail shortly. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we did move item number four on the agenda to the bottom of the agenda. So we're the next property we're looking at is item number five, which is 121 Borden Avenue. Oh, sorry, that's been withdrawn, excuse me. The next item we're looking at is number six, is uh, 211 Tufnell Drive. That's also withdrawn, Madam Chair. Oh, so it is. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Yeah. All right, so number seven, 10 Ruskin Row. Yeah, you can just sit here. 
Welcome, Mr. Youngman. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Madam so, Chair. Yes. Just want to bring to your notice uh, that the uh, evidence for this application is uh, submitted late. So I haven't put that into the SharePoint yet. If you will allow me, I can just put that into there. The applicant's uh, evidence you're talking about? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, Madam Assessor, do you have any problem with that? No, that's fine. No, okay. Okay, thank you. So are you going to email that to us or? I'm just putting that into the SharePoint, Madam Chair. Oh, you're putting it in there. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, just give us a minute so we can pull it up and so we're not in the middle of everything. We're not trying to... Uh... Yeah. Okay, I see it here now. I have it. I have it as well. Okay. Mr. Merritt, do you have it as well? And Ms. Kaplevi? Uh, uh, yes. I'm not here. Uh, not there yet. There. Have you got? Have okay. you got it, Mr. Mayor? You do. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, Mr. Youngman, I think you've been. Uh, have you been observing what's been happening? Um, um, while uh, you were waiting, uh, what will happen now is uh, the assessor will provide her her information. You'll be able to ask questions if you like. Uh, and then um, after that, we'll ask her some questions and then it'll be your turn and the same process will repeat, okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Kaplevi, please uh, proceed when you're ready. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. The subject property is 12 Ruskin Row. It has a roll number of 120970. Uh, excuse me, I have 10 Ruskin Row on the uh, dock here. 
Oh, sorry. What did I say? You said 12. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just be sure we're talking about the same property. Yep. I'm looking at the subject number and reversed it. So sorry. I apologize. Okay. The street address is 10 Ruskin Row. The roll number is 1209-780-4320. It is in the neighborhood area, 601 Crescent Wood. It is a unique area around Peanut Park. The building type is a two-story single dwelling with a year built of 1974 and an effective year built of 1989. There's 4,316 square feet. It has a full basement with basement finish, two full baths, three half baths, three showers. It has central air conditioning. It has one fireplace. It has an attached garage from the basement and an in-ground pool. The assessed lot size is 14,225 square feet. The land influence is a park as it is on Peanut Park, I just stated. The 2023 assessment roll value is 1,420,000. It is an assessment per square foot of $329.01. Comparable one is 916 Wellington Crescent which is in 631 Wellington Crescent area, but not on the river. Comparable two is also on Wellington Crescent, 820 Wellington Crescent. Comparable three is 91 Waterloo. And comparable four is 238 Kingsway in the Crescentwood 601 neighborhood area. Comparable one, two, and three are two stories, the same as the subject. Comparable four is a two and a half story. All the comparables are single dwellings. The year built of the comparables range from 1913 to 1930. The effective year built of the comparables range from 1950 to 1978. The living areas range from 2,876 square feet to 4,116 square feet. Comparable one, two, and four have a full basement and basement finish. Comparable three has a full part area basement and basement finish. Comparable one has one full bath, three half baths, and two showers. Comparable two has three full baths, one half bath with a shower. Comparable three has three full baths and two half baths. Comparable four has two full baths, two half baths, and two showers. All four comparables have central air, and the comparables have either one, two, or three fireplaces. Comparable one and four have attached multiple garages. Comparable two and three have detached multiple garages. Comparable two has an in-ground pool, the same as the subject, and comparable three has a sunroom. The lot sizes of the comparables range from 9,008 square feet, external corner and light traffic, to 17,978 square feet, light traffic. The sales prices range from 1,150,000 to 1.4 million. The time adjusted sales prices range from 1,137,200 to 1,517,600. The time adjusted sales price per square foot range from $350.66 to $452.29. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Youngman, do you have any uh, questions for the assessor? Uh, just a few. <clears throat> Hi, Kara. Uh, we've talked on the phone, but uh, I haven't met you, so hi. Um, uh, Kara, were you aware that my basement is nominally finished? There's only 675 square feet of the basement, which is finished. The rest is concrete storage area, exposed pipes. Um, were you yes, aware that's that? correct. Okay. I, I believe you said it was fully finished. Um, uh, we have basement. We have basement finish noted, but uh, we have the square footage amount noted in. 
Okay. Um, are you aware that I only have two half baths, not three? I was not aware of that until I uh, saw your information there. So if you want to provide us with uh, the floor plan, certainly we can readjust that for you. Yes. And, and lastly, there are only two showers, not three, um, as you mentioned. Um, Carol, the, the one thing that struck me when I looked at your comps is how far away many of them are. Um, those of us who live, what's called the Peanut Park area, uh, we consider the furthermost boundary of our neighborhood really to be Cambridge. When everything changes, the streets change, the layout of the streets change. And I noticed that uh, two of your properties are outside or beyond the Cambridge area altogether. Um, one of them, which is in the area, 238 Kingsway, are you aware that that property was gutted when it was bought? Yes, I am aware of that. Prior to evaluation, I, I walk my dog every day past 238 Kingsway, and I have for years. And there was one summer there where there were no windows, there were no rooms, birds could fly into the living room and the family room. So I know from personal observation that it's been completely and totally and thoroughly renovated, unlike my property. Well, I'm also aware that there was a permit on yours and your house was renovated in 2014, 2015. Is that correct? Yes. But and Sorry. And yes. the permit says that the entire interior was gutted down to the studs? That's not true. Well, th that's what the permit, permit says. Okay, so uh, Mr. Youngman, right now um, you can present some of that information in your presentation. Right now you're asking questions of the assessor, please. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. Also, I know, Kara, that two of your properties are in Wellington Crescent, one of which is far beyond um, Cambridge. Um, I'm wondering why you did that because Wellington Crescent, it's, it's a different ball game. It's, it's a different ball game from River Heights. It's a different ball game from Crescentwood. And I just didn't see the value of including them, especially when at least one of them that I'm aware of, the 916 Wellington Crescent, again, was completely and totally gutted and renovated and returned to 1929 level. You can see that if you Google the property, Lainey Dansker, who sold the property, uh, still has a video you can watch from that period. And it, it, it looks like every single thing, every single finish was renovated. Uh, I'm not sure what the question is there, but in terms of my comparables, yes, uh, they are all in the same market area. And Ruskin Row, where you live on, is a very unique area around Peanut Park. The houses there are more valuable and desirable than the normal Crescent Wood on Cambridge. So that is why I chose the comparables I chose. Those are all my those are all my questions. Okay, thank you. Mr. Merritt, do you have any questions? I just have one question, uh, Kara. Um, you talk about the uh, the subject uh, and it has a park influence. Can you uh, talk about that compared uh, to the other ones? Sorry? Uh, it has a park influence because it is by Peanut Park. Okay. And what does Peanut Park consist of? Peanut Park is a, you can, I don't know if it shows on the map there, it's a central park that's located in that neighborhood and the properties that are surrounding Peanut Park area are definitely more desirable and more valuable than the other properties that are away from Peanut Park. Right, I thank you. Ms. Deloro, do you have any questions for the assessor? Um, well, I think my questions were addressed. It also had to do with the diversity of the properties and comparables, um, but I think the applicant asked my question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I do not think I have any further questions. So Mr. Youngman, uh, please proceed to uh, provide your evidence to us. Okay. 
Um, basically, I'm presenting the uh, document that all of you should have in front of you. I'll repeat the fact that um, there's only two half baths, not three. There's only two showers, not three. Um, the assessment, I, I, I want to I make this point. The assessment has increased by 29%, okay? It went from 1 million one to 1 million 420,000. That's an increase of $320,000 in two years, okay? I believe that's excessive. Um, what I did is I tried to include properties not on, you know, at the end of the world, not in different qualitatively uh, different uh, neighborhoods, but ones that were at least within the Cam what I call the Cambridge zone. In other words, between Wellington Crescent and Cambridge, which is where two of the two, two main uh, roads end, Yale and, and Harvard, uh, both of which kind of bookend my, my street. Um, I also chose these properties based on the fact that notwithstanding all of my sleuthing, I could not find any evidence of extensive renovations to any of these properties. That's not to say that they were not, it's just that in my sleuthing, I could not determine um, that. The reason I mention that is because I think it's a good comparison to my property, whereas there were um, uh, renovations made after I bought the property in 2013. Number one, they were relatively modest. They were under $100,000. They did not involve gutting down to the studs by any stretch of the imagination. And they were all under $100,000. Basically, uh, I upgraded the kitchen, I painted, and that, those were the most extensive renovations that I did. Um, I did have grander plans for the renos at the time. Uh, not all of the renos that I contemplated were executed. Uh, you'll see before you, there's five subject properties that I uh, named as comps. Um, Kara compared the properties based on square footage. I did it a little bit differently. What I did is I took the time adjusted value for each of the five properties and I extrapolated it to the square footage of my property, okay? In other words, had that been my property with my square footage, that the, the value would be what you see there. By way of example, if you look at 174 Yale, my first pump, um, the time, its time adjusted sale price is $739,000. If it were the square footage of mine, uh, that property was 3165. It was if it was the square footed footage of mine, 4316, the extra extrapolated value would be one million and seven thousand seven hundred and forty-eight dollars. I did that with each of the five properties, again, all within the Cambridge Wellington area. In terms of arriving at uh, a comparable time adjusted price. What I did is I simply averaged all of the extrapolated time adjusted values of 410 Ruskin. And that is what you see there with the star beside it on page two, a million and thirty-five thousand dollars five hundred and fifty-one. Underneath, uh, you'll see there's a fun fact. My building is a twin. My next door neighbor, one Paul. Uh, the, the home was built at the same time in the same infill situation regarding a subsequent to the same demolition of, of 10 Ruskin, which took over three properties at the time. Their assessed value is within 30, 2022 is, is within $31,000 of my average adjusted price. That tells me that it's in the correct zone. That tells me that I uh, just to I just want to clarify again, though, Mr. Youngman, that we can't um, take comparisons of assessment as part of our as part of the evidence. It needs to the sales you've provided us, yes, but uh, not other assessments. Yes, and and in fact, I did use only um, 
sold properties in my final figure. All I'm saying is it gave me confidence that I was in the right zone when I realized what the assessed value of my neighbor was, uh, who also had a 1974 modern 70s designed home with slightly larger square footage and a slightly larger property than mine. Uh, I should also tell you that uh, there are numerous items in my property in my house that need addressing that will um, cost a significant amount of money and uh, therefore affect the, um, the, the value and the assessed value of, of the property. Um, Extensive landscaping is required. My front yard is basically wild. The previous owners who were there for 30 years didn't touch anything. There is a vestige of a lawn left over, thankfully for my dogs, uh, but that needs to be addressed. I don't have to tell anybody what landscaping costs these days. Um, there is a brick perimeter wall slash fence around my entire property. It's falling apart. Um, I had a contractor look at it last month and I'm awaiting a quote. When I say it's falling apart, it's literally falling apart. Bricks are falling out of the wall and that is gonna be an expensive item uh, to uh, fix. The driveway and the garage floor, both concrete are extensively cracked, require extensive uh, repair or replacement. There is a uniquely designed cover our, uh, engineered cover over my driveway and that's falling apart every time there's a storm panels fly off again an expensive repair um, there's two large balconies whose membranes have failed one of them is leaking into my house the other one is not over living area both need to uh, be uh, repaired. And finally, there is a part of the basement which is not over the house. In other words, it's the backyard that's over the house for a portion of the basement. That membrane has failed. I discovered that very quickly after purchasing the property and that needs to be fixed. That is one of the most expensive items uh, of repair required on my property. <laughs> That's my presentation subject to any questions you have. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Kaplevi, do you have any questions for Mr. Youngman? Uh, yes. Thank you. How long have you owned the house? Since uh, two, seven years, eight years. Okay. So did you not take out a permit in 2014? Yes, I did. Yeah. And what did that permit entail? It entailed uh, basically a lot of um, pie in the sky dreaming uh, between me and my uh, the architect that I hired to help me. But in the end, the actual renovations were pared down, as I mentioned, to under $100,000. Well, the permit does say description of work gutting to studs rebuilding interior. So are you saying that work was not done? There was no, no, there wasn't. In fact, virtually all of the uh, drywall was intact and simply painted. It was cracked in a few areas, uh, so it was plastered, but there was, during the renovations, you didn't see one stud. Was there structural and electrical and mechanical work done? Uh, there may have been in the plans, but as I say, the actual final renovations ended up to be under $100,000. Okay, and um, the comparables here that you list on Yale, do you have the uh, years that these homes were built? Uh, these, I, I don't, I, I could look them up on, on the sales data, but they would have been older homes like 99.99% of the homes in the areas are. So I would say, you know, 1914 to 1920 something. 19 right. And what year was your house built? Me and my 
what I call my twin property, were both infill developments, 1974. Okay, and now you did mention your neighbor there. Have you been in number one, Polk? Yes. Okay, well, just so you know, I can't go into specific details, but I personally inspected the property this spring, and that property is in no condition. It's in, a, there's major issues there, and that accounts for the value. And when we spoke on the phone, you told me there were no issues with your house. Is that correct? No, no structural issues, no. It, it needs okay. extensive repairs, as I've described, but the actual, in my view, the, my, house is, my house is on a sound footing. I, I'm not aware, I have been in one, Paul, to answer your question, and it was, that was extensively renovated from top to bottom. Um, and and I, I know, because I looked at the property when it was for sale, uh, the basement had major flooring issues, but those were repaired by the owner and in fact my neighbors uh, i'm going to interrupt you on that because uh, as i said i personally inspected the property this spring and there's major issues with that house so that house is nowhere near comparable to yours okay and uh, and it's it you know what it's a moot point because we're not going to be comparing the assessments uh anyway in our dis in our deliberations so Okay, and um, are you aware of the square footage of the properties that you list on Yale? Yes, they're all in my in my presentation. Oh, sorry, of the lot sizes. No, I, I no. Didn't. Okay, and how big is your lot size? My lot is over uh, over fourteen thousand square feet. Okay, well, number 174 Yale, again, is much smaller than yours. It's 5,700 square feet. Okay. Okay, I have no further questions. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Ms. Del Oro, do you have any questions for Mr. Youngman? Uh, no, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Merritt, do you have any questions? Um, Mr. Youngman, um, what uh, value are you seeking this afternoon? For your property, I'm uh, I, I'm seeking a valuation of one million thirty five thousand five hundred and fifty one dollars based on the average of the comps extrapolated to my square footage, which is larger in the case of these most of these comps. Can you give me that figure one more time? Yeah, it's it's on the top of the second page of my document. One million. Uh, one million thirty five thousand five hundred and fifty one dollars, which I note is within a mere thirty one thousand dollars of my neighbor's assessed value for the same period. Um, just offhand, normally um, the city issues a, uh, a brochure that comes to all property orders and um, uh, at times uh, it specifies certain areas increase. Are you aware of any increase for your particular area in regards to um, the increases for you know, your property? Well, I based on based on the time adjusted sales data and based on the April first, two thousand twenty one, I do feel this reflects the value of the home at that time. I, I, I'm, I'm like many people. I'm aware through reading the paper that during the pandemic and subsequent homes have gone up in value. But as of the April one, two thousand twenty-one, based on comps in the market, which doesn't lie, um, I feel that's a fair price for my home. I think, sir. Thank you. Okay, I just have um, one question. So the, the, the value that you just provided to Mr. Merritt is actually appears to be less than the value of your previous assessment. So you don't think your you think your home has gone down in value since it, its previous assessment? You know, to answer your question, I, I've been told so many times that really what matters is is comps based on, on a certain period period of time. So when I did this investigation, I didn't have any predetermined amounts in my brain. But when I did the math, I extrapolated to my square footage. This is the amount I got. Um, I, I didn't start out thinking that it was going to be more than my 
previous assessed value or less. It just happened that way based on the comps. Yeah, but do, do you think your property is worth less than it was in the previous assessment? I think based on the, the data that I was allowed to use, yes. Okay, if thank I were you. To, if I were to go down Ruskin and kind of give my evaluation, that might change, my answer might change, but not based on what, what I was forced to deal with in terms of comps. Okay, okay. thank you. That's all the questions I had. Um, Ms. Kaplevy, would you like to um, provide a summary? Uh, yes, based on the subject's age, the size of the subject, where the subject is located, I feel that the comparables support the value of the assessment, and I ask that the 2023 value be confirmed. Thank you. Um, Mr. Youngman, do you, anything you'd like to say in summation? I'd like to reiterate that my assessment is now the highest assessment on my walk. It's gone up 29% since the previous assessment. It's gone up $320,000 since the previous assessment. And the amount of renovations required, not discretionary renovations required, are in my opinion in the hundreds of thousands of dollars if I were to do all of these tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we'll, you'll receive our decision in the mail shortly, and we appreciate you taking the time to come and talk to us today. Thank you. Okay, so um, Mr. Kumar, I'm, um, uh, we still have no applicants for number one or number four on the agenda, correct? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, the um, board will take a, a short recess to deliberate with respect to the remaining, those two remaining items to be heard. So um, we'll just recess. It'll only be a couple of minutes and then we'll be back. Thank you. Two, one, I'd like to call the meeting back to order. The board has deliberated and we will proceed with the remaining two items in the absence of the applicants. So the first item uh, will be 608 Elverston. And um, Ms. Kaplevi, uh, please proceed when you're ready with your presentation. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. The address is 608 Elverston Street. The, sub, the roll number is 1303 it has a 2023 assessment roll value of 211,000, which is $158.53 per square foot. I presented compar comparable sales that support the assessed value, and I would ask the board to confirm the 2023 assessment. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Merritt, do you have any questions regarding this property? No, other than was there any contact with the individual? Um, no, there was not. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Ms. Delaro, do you have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, the, the next item on the um, on the agenda is was item number four, H38 Prince Rupert Avenue. Again, Ms. Kiplevy, when you're ready, please uh, proceed. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. The street address is 838 Prince Rupert Avenue. It has a roll number of 02051751000. It has a 2023 assessment roll value of 285,000, which is $284.72 per square foot. I presented comparable sales that support the assessed value, and I ask that the board confirm the assessment. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Deloro, do you have any questions regarding this property? I do not. Okay. Mr. Merritt? Any contact? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I have no questions. So given that uh, we have now dealt with all of the items on today's agenda, uh, we will, uh, I will declare this hearing adjourned and thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Karen. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.